The 3D glasses effect is found under the perspective category, and believe it or not, there was a time where stereoscopic 3D viewing was really being pushed hard for viewing on a television did not last, but at the time that it was getting popular, After Effects, Cinema 4D, and other softwares were all able to work in stereoscopic 3D. Whether you're generating 3D graphics or manipulating graphics that were created in stereoscopic. And this 3D glasses effect helps for viewing that stereoscopic footage on a standard monitor, among other things. Now, I'm not actually going to apply this effect to anything because there is a simple way of creating a stereoscopic 3D scene in After Effects automatically. So what I have here is just a very basic 3D scene in After Effects. I made my logo 3D, added in some particles behind it, and animated the camera to go back and forth just to get some perspective and parallax between these two layers. Now all I need to do is click on that camera, go up to Layer, down to Camera, and say Create Stereo 3D Rig. When I do that, some scripts are gonna run in the background, compositions are gonna be generated, and things will be linked together, as well as creating the Stereo 3D Controls layer with the 3D glasses effect applied, as well as a Stereo 3D Controls preset to help manipulate this image. But if I zoom in here, you can see right away, we've got this red-blue split happening, which if you had those red-blue 3D glasses, would allow you to view this with actual parallax and look 3D. It's as simple as that to create a stereoscopic scene in After Effects. But let's take a look at what controls we have available to us in the 3D glasses effect. First of all, we have sources for the left and right view. It's automatically linked these up to what it needs to be, but if you're working with stereoscopic footage that was created in multiple passes, maybe in a different piece of software, you could select your two sources right there. Next is scene convergence, and this is a red number, meaning that it's linked to something else via expressions, but it's still a value that I can change. So if I click and drag this, you'll see that it shifts my convergence around, and it's really sensitive, so I'm gonna hold down Control to modify that in a smaller increment. But I'm just gonna leave it at its negative three default. We could also change the vertical alignment, but my source doesn't need any kind of alignment, so I'm gonna leave that at zero. We have our units, which is measured at percentage of source by default, but you could change this to pixels. The benefit of leaving it at percent of source is that you can scale things up or down after the fact, and it's gonna take that scale change in account with the rest of this rig. You can swap the left and right channels if that's something you needed to do. And then we have the 3D view. This is defaulted to balanced color red and blue, which is going to preserve most of the original color while giving us that red and blue shift for viewing with 3D glasses but you can change this to any number of view types depending on what type of footage you're working with. Starting from here down are standard 3D glasses views. If you're using different color channels, you could choose any of those options. Up here we have stereo pair side by side, and this is what the stereo pair would look like if your footage was shot that way. This is a format that you could use on a VR headset because that's how it's displaying it, left and right views for each eye. We've got over under, which is a less common format, interlaced upper left, lower right. This was a format that was typically used for 3D screens. And then we have difference, which is just a utility so that we can see where the parts of the image that are not identical actually are. But that's it for 3D glasses. Like I said, stereoscopic footage is a technology that really didn't pan out and it was never really meant to be viewed as a red blue stereoscopic image like we have here. This effect was much more intentionally just for being able to view your 3D parallax easily on a normal screen while working, and then ultimately exported at one of these other views to be used with higher end glasses and actual 3D televisions. But that's everything you need to know about 3D glasses. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.